بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد سبحانك لا علما إلا ما علمتنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم آت أنفسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The one by his blessing are righteous deeds completed By his blessing alone righteous deeds are completed and follow through we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being able to start our book about five months ago and finish that book. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put barakah and give us his tawfiq, his success to be able to apply that which was taught and that which was learned and heard. Ameen. As far as the book that we are going to get in now is from the same author, Sheikh Abdul Razak. Ibn Abdul Muhsin Al Badr, Hafidhumullah Ta'ala, may Allah protect and preserve both of them. And the book is Waja'a Shahr Ramadan, and the month of Ramadan has arrived. The month of Ramadan has came. It is a very, very appropriate book to be going over. Very, very appropriate because Ramadan is Alal Al Abwab, as they say. Ramadan Alal Abwab. That Ramadan, Ramadan is at the door. Ramadan, Ramadan is at the gates. It's, very, it's right here. We have maybe a little bit over a month before this blessed month of so many gifts and mercy and barakah and blessings and safety. وَتَقَرُّبْ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزِّ وَجَلْ And drawing near to Allah. وَهِدَايَةً And guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many people found hidayah, guidance in the month of Ramadan? How many people changed their lives in the month of Ramadan? How many people's necks were saved from the hellfire in the month of Ramadan? Naam. So it's very appropriate that we chose a book like this. And it's a short book. It's not a long book. It's not going to take as long as our last book. It's going to be a few weeks inshallah. And we'll finish the book. And come prepared. Filled with taqa imaniya. Filled with yani, energy. Yani, iman. Filled with yani, the wanting to go forward Filled with yani, the zeal To take yani, advantage of this month Naam. So we're going to get into it inshallah وَجَاءَ شَهْرَ Ramadan, And Ramadan has arrived Ramadan has came The author begins حَفِيدَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُ ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. Truly, all the praise is for Allah Azza wa Jal. We praise Him and we seek His aid and we seek forgiveness from Him and we repent to Him over and over again and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil consequences of our deeds. ما يهده الله فلا مضل له. Whoever Allah guides, there is no one that can lead this individual astray. وَمَن يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ And whoever Allah leads astray, there is no one that can guide this individual. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ And I bear witness that nothing is worse than truth except Allah alone with our partners. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his slave, his servant and his messenger and he is to be followed. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وسلم تسليما كثيرا And may the peace and abundance of prayers be upon him and on his family and on his companions, all of them. اللهم آمين أما بعد as for what follows, we're going to get into his speech now. إن الاجتماع لتذاكر أمور الدين عموما وتذاكر مواسم الخير التي يستقبلها المؤمنون يستقبلها المؤمنون لا شك أنه من الأمور المهمة. Surely 
the coming together like a gathering that we have right here. Surely, the Sheikh is saying, surely the coming together and the gathering to remind one another of the affairs of the religion and to remind one another and speak and study about the great seasons like the season of Ramadan and the season of Hajj that is approaching the believers. لا شك, there's no doubt أنه من الأمور المهمة that is from the very very important affairs that we come together and we remind each other of the, of, of the religion and the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and these seasons that are about to come up that are full of khair, full of goodness. That it is very imperative that we give it our great concern and care. We have to give care to these times as the believer. As we know Allah has created us to worship Him. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made there a blessed time for us, right now Ramadan is the most blessed time of the year, then we should be sitting down talking about it. Preparing. If there was a big transaction, if there was a month or there was a season, if we were all business people, and this was a great season about to come up, that we can make a lot of money and we're going to sit down and talk about it. Listen, we got to make this move and we got to make that move and we got to come together and we got to make this deal because there's going to be a lot of money that's going to be made in this season. Right? That's dunya. Can't take none of it with you. And it will not benefit you in the hereafter. This Ramadan, this is everything. Dunya wal akhirah. وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى And the Akhirah, the hereafter, is better and everlasting. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Forever in it. Forever. This dunya is a number of days. And it's fleeting and it's coming to an end. So it's imperative that we give care and concern to this. لَمَّا يَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْعَوَائِدِ الْكَرِيمَةِ وَالْخَيْرَاتِ الْعَظِيمَةِ وَالْمَنَافِعِ الْجَمَّةِ أَلَّتِي لَا تُعَدُّ وَلَا تُحْظَى That which is comes out of, about from these times of the year, that comes from great habits, like what's the great habits in Ramadan? Fasting, taraweeh, right? Coming together, making the night prayer, giving an abundance of charity, reading of the Qur'an. What comes about from these seasons, from great noble habits, and great good that comes from about from them. وَالْمَنَافِعُ الْجَمَّةِ And great benefits, for the slaves. As Allah, Allah the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلُّ لَيْلَةِ And in every single night of Ramadan, a people's necks will be saved from the hellfire. Is not that a benefit for them? Great benefit. يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامِ O you who believe, fasting has been made obligatory upon you. كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Like it has been made obligatory upon those people who came before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّكُونَ So you can achieve piety. So you can finally get control of yourself. Is that not a benefit for mankind? A great benefit. So we sit and we talk about these things. He said, These benefits that cannot be counted. We can't count the benefits of Ramadan. Now we're going to get into the first hadith. Speaking about the great importance. This hadith is going to be a question as well. Speaking about the great fadl, the great bounty. The great excellence in sitting in gatherings like this. Because today, Lil Asif al Shadid, very sorry to say, many people neglect these gatherings. They neglect them. They say, I catch it online, or you know what, I watch a Facebook video, I watch a YouTube video. That's not enough. That's not enough. If you really want to learn your religion, that's not enough. Those are little sparks. That's all it is, little sparks of enthusiasm. But you're not going to really learn by scrolling through YouTube. You're going to be on the basketball clip one minute, the football clip the next minute, next minute you're watching Sheikh so-and-so speak about this. Then you go back to National Geographic, watching how the animals fight, so on and so forth. That's YouTube. You hear, there, there, there. You don't learn that way. You need to come here to the places where we are yani specifically calling and reminding of the religion calling to reminding of religion in the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have a book we have yani ayat hadith we take the ayat we ha- ha- take the hadith we dissect them we memorize them we learn the meaning of them and we keep building different topics 
You write down, you have a book, you have a pad, you write down, you get questions, you answer those questions every week. This is how you learn. Just getting little sparks and watching things here and there, that's nice, alhamdulillah. But that's not how a person is going to learn. This is how you learn. Whether it's with me or somebody else. But coming here to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the presence of the malaika, the house, this house has angels in it. There are angels that come and they look for these certain gatherings. So they can shroud these gatherings with their wings. That's why you feel serenity and you feel peace. Now, you can't get this nowhere else. You can't get on your phone, not on your computer, not in your car. No. You gotta come for this. And it takes effort. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنْهُمْ سُبُلَنَا And those who strive in our way, those who work hard and strive and put effort, Allah says we will guide them. That effort you take to come get dressed and drive here or come on a bus and sit down and take time, that's a means of your guidance. Allah says, go to the end of Surah Al-Ankabut, last ayah. Surah Al-Ankabut, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا Those who strive in our way. Those who strive in our cause, لَنَهْدِيَنُّهُمْ subulana, We will guide them to our pathways. That's the promise of Allah. You want to sit and get it easy? Guidance doesn't come that way. Guidance comes with effort. Now, first hadith. وَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي صَحِيْ مُسْلِمْ And it has came in Sahih Muslim. أَنَّ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ خَرَجَ عَلَىٰ أَصْحَابِهِ يَوْمًا وَهُمْ جُلُوسٌ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ يَتَدَاكَرُونَ That one day, the Prophet ﷺ came out to his companions and they're in a gathering, studying amongst one another. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they're in a gathering and they are studying and reminding one another. فَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ والسلام. So then the Prophet of Allah ﷺ, he said to them, asking the question, مَا أَجْلَسَكُمْ What has caused you to sit here? What is the purpose of this gathering? What made you sit down here? Ma ajlasukum. Kulna jalasna natadakir islam. Wama manna Allahu alayna bih. Subhanallah al azim. Look at the Sahaba. Yani we sat down to remind each other about Islam. Allahu akbar. Not talking dunya. Not talking yani stuff that have no benefit. They said we sat down to remind each other of Islam and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with it. Look at the Sahaba. Huh? الله أكبر. فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام أن the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said الله ما أجلسكم إلا ذلك he made them swear by Allah he said يعني الله by Allah no reason other than to remind each other of Islam and Allah's blessing upon you is the reason why you sat by Allah that's the only reason why you sat down there they said they said Wallahi ma ajlasana illa dhalik. They said, Wallahi, we did not sit down except because of that. That's the only reason why we sat down. To remind each other of the deen and how Allah's blessing upon us. Faqala alayhi salatu wa salam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa salam said, Ama wallahi. And this is the point of me mentioning the hadith. For all of us to get the good news of these type of gatherings. Ama wallahi. Inni lam astahlifkum. تُهْمَةً لَكُمْ وَلَكِنْ أَتَانِ جِبْرِيلُ آنِفًا فَأَخْبَرَنِي أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَاهِ بِكُمْ مَلَائِكَتُهُ He said, Wallahi, surely, I did not yani, make you swear to accuse you of lying. I didn't make you swear to accuse you of lying. Actually, what made you sit down? You said we only sat down to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember Islam and how Allah's blessing upon us. The Prophet said, I did not ask you to swear to accuse you of lying, but rather Jibreel. Jibreel just came to me not too long ago. And he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's bragging about you to the angels. Allahu Akbar. Jibreel just came to me and he's bragging about all of you to the angels right now. So these are these type of sittings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me and I'll remember you. Remember me and I'll remember you. Now, this is a hadith for our memorization, inshallah. Try to remember it. And this is something that you always keep in mind. Should I come to the class? Should I not? Remember this. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal, the most high, mentioning you to the angels. Imagine that. 
فهذه إشارة عظيمة لمن أكرمه الله تعالى ومن عليه لحفظ وقته في مثل هذه المجالس التي تعقد في بيوت الله التي أذن الله جل وعلا أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه He says, so this is a great indication to those who Allah subhanahu has honored to sit or to guard his time in the example of these type of sittings. Yani, this is a great indication. This hadith is a great indication for those who Allah has blessed and honored to put his time into these type of gatherings. That are established in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That Allah has commanded that they be raised up And His name be mentioned in them We took this ayah before in Surah An-Nur يعني رجال أو في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع In houses Allah commands that they be raised up ويذكر في هسمه And His name be praised in them constantly We took this ayah in the last class ومثل هذه المجالس المباركة لا بد المسلم أن يصبر أن يصبر نفسه عليها. And these type of gatherings is upon the believers to يعني restrain or to make themselves patient upon them consistently. To make yourself, make your soul patient upon these gatherings for the great amounts of benefit that comes in it. We know that laziness comes, boredness comes, want to relax. Want to go have fun, have a meal? No, you have to restrain yourself and make yourself patient to be continuous upon these gatherings because the benefit is immense. Wallahi, this is a garden from the gardens of paradise, this type of gathering. Look how Allah has singled us out to sit in the, His house, to remember Him and to learn His religion. In America, in New York City, we could be doing anything and everything is open and nobody's going to blame you for it. Nobody's going to get mad at you. Why are you over there doing that? Rather, they're going to praise you for it. Rather, you neglect that and you turn away from it and you come here to the house of Allah and sit to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. How is Allah going to bless you? Allahu Akbar. Naam. وَأَنْ يَقْتَطِعَ لَهَا مِنْ وَقْتِهِ حَتَّى يَسْتَفِيدَ وَيَنْتَفِعَ And that he cuts a time. He cuts a portion from his time and her time to benefit. وَإِلَّا إِذَا كَانَ لَاهِيًا مُنْصَرِفًا مُنْشَغِلًا مُكِبًّا عَلَىٰ أُمُورْ دُنْيَاهُ أَلَّتِي لَا تَنْتَهِي But if that person is heedless, unmindful, busied, preoccupied, drowning, fully engulfed in the dunya, and that, that never ends, it doesn't come to an end, the dunya doesn't come to an end. You can't say, I'm just going to get a little bit more, it doesn't end. If a person is unmindful and heedless and busied and completely engulfed, running behind the dunya that never ends, this person will never be, never prepare himself to get acquainted with the things of goodness. He'll never get prepared to learn with that which is good for his soul. abwabihi And get to know the different doors of goodness. وَمَعْرِفَةُ السُّبُلْ أَلَّتِي يَصِلُ مِنْ خِلَالِهَا إِلَى الْخَيْرِ And to know the pathways, know the pathways that will get that person to the good. The person who is running behind the dunya all day long, not coming and sitting down in these type of gatherings, the person will not remember to do good for himself. But look at you all. Or look at anyone who comes to these type of gatherings consistently. First off, the, a company of people you're with are all righteous people, alhamdulillah, believers. Just them is a reason for you raising iman. You're in the house of Allah, number two. Second, what is being preached here? Things that are good, ways to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're constantly being reminded, oh, I'm going to do this, let me fast. Oh, let me give this charity. Oh, let me wake up with the hajjud. Oh, let me rectify between these groups of people. Let me forgive so and so. You're constantly being reminded of the ways to do good when you come to these gatherings. All the time. So the person who comes, as the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيقًا مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهَا عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ لَهُ تَرِيقًا لِلْجَنَّةِ Whoever treads a path to seek knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for him, as a result of him taking that path, a path to the Jannah. So the one who's seeking this knowledge, knowledge of the religion, 
he's constantly being reminded on how to do good and how to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, he's constantly on the path to Allah azza wa jal. Now, أَمَّا الْمَوْضُوعَ الَّذِي نَحْنُ بِصَدَرِ الْكَلَامِ عَنْهُ فَهُوَ عَنْ إِكْبَالِ شَهْرَ رَمَضَانِ As far as the subject that we are speaking about tonight or in this book, it is about the approaching of the month of Ramadan. So that was an introduction. Now we're going to get into the book. We are speaking about the approaching of the month of Ramadan. كَمَا تَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ قَدْ بَقِيَ عَلَى دُخُولِ هَذَا الشَّهْرَ الْمُبَارَقِ Ayamun ma'duda, as everyone knows that only a few days are left for Ramadan to come. Wallahi, brothers, we should all be excited. Sisters, we should be excited. Should be excited. Some of our brothers right here, mashallah, our brother, this inshallah be his first Ramadan. Wallahi, you haven't seen nothing yet. May Allah allow you to see Ramadan. Ameen. And allow us to see it. Wallahi, Ramadan is a beautiful time. Wallahi, beautiful. Naam. ثم يتل بخيراته العميمة وأفضاله الكريمة وبركات المتوالية. Then when it comes in, it will shower us with its great immense good and its honorable virtues and its consistent blessings over and over and over again for the whole 29 or 30 days. فشهر رمضان قد أقبل وإقباله للمسلمين له شأن عظيم and Ramadan has came near. And the approaching of Ramadan has a great, great, is a great, great affair with the Muslims. And has a great place in the Muslim souls. لأنهم يتشوفون مجيئه ويتطلعون إلى قدومه Because they are waiting and expecting and excited and getting excited for it to come. ويتباشرون عند دنوه And they are congratulating one another. Ramadan is here, alhamdulillah. Ramadan is coming close. They're congratulating one another when it comes near. وَيَفْرَحُونَ بِهِ إِذَا دَخَلْ فَرْحًا عَظِيمًا And they become so happy and joyful when it enters. فَرْحًا عَظِيمًا لَمَّا يَعْلَمُونَهُ عَنْ هَذَا الْمُوسِمِ الْعَظِيمَ الْمُبَارَكِ What they know from this great blessed season من الخيرات العظيمة From the great good والخصائص الجليلة And the lofty يعني things that Make it different than every, any, any other time. What they know of that. التي تميز بها هذا الشهر واختص بها من بين سائل الشهور. The thing, the things of this month of Ramadan that make it different from all the other months. And make it special from all the other months. The Muslims are excited for that. From what they know from the things that are يعني specific, the specific virtues of the month of Ramadan. ومن أكرمه الله جل وعلا وَفَسَحَ فِي أَجْلِهِ Whoever Allah blesses and honors and increases his lifespan وَمَدَّ فِي عُمْرِهِ and increases his age لِيَصِلَ وَيَبْلُغَ هَذَا الشَّهْرِ الْكَرِيمِ to reach this great month فَهَذِهِ مِنَّةٌ عَظِيمًا عَلَى الْعَبْدِ for surely this is a great blessing upon the slave don't take it lightly brothers and sisters don't take it lightly that we reach them of Ramadan and think that you're expected to meet, meet the meet of Ramadan. Because there are people that were with us last year, they're not no longer with us this year. How many janazas that we had this year? There are people that are, were with us last year, this year they're not with us. Young and old. So for the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to reach this month, this is a great, great bounty upon him. ليشارك أهل الإسلام في قط في جنا هذا الموسم العظيم المبارك موسم الطاعة والإيمان وتقرب إلى الرحمن to be able to take part with the people of Islam in eating from the fruits eating and picking from the fruits of this great blessed month and this great blessed season of obedience and iman وَتَقَرُّبْ إِلَى اللَّهِ أو إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ And the drawing near to Ar-Rahman. And now we're going to get into the next hadith. وَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي السُّنَّةِ الصَّحِيحَةِ أَنَّ النَّبِيِّ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ كَانَ يُبَشِّرُ أَصْحَابُ بِقُدُومِ هَذِ الشَّهَرِ And has came in the authentic sunnah that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to give glad tidings to his companions about the approaching of the month of Ramadan. He used to say to his companions, قَدَ جَاءَكُمْ رَمَضَانِ 
Look at the wording of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would say to his companions, "Ramadan has came to you." Ramadan. He made Ramadan here like it's a human being. Ramadan has came to you. Not we have entered into month Ramadan. He will say to his companions, "Kadajaakum Ramadan. Ramadan has came to you like as a guest, like as an honorable, noble guest. Shahrul Mubarak, a blessed month, meaning it has unlimited khair, unlimited goodness. If Allah alaykum siyamu, Allah has made obligatory upon you fasting in this month. Tuftahu fihi abwabul jannah. All the gates of the paradise will be opened in this month. وَتُغْلَقُ فِيهِ أَبْوَابُ الْجَحِيمِ And all the gates of the hellfire will be closed shut. وَتُغَلُّ فِيهِ الشَّيَاطِينِ And the shayateen, the devils that cause corruption and cause animosity between the people and cause mishap, they will be chained up in this month, giving you an easier opportunity to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and join near Him. فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ In this month of Ramadan, there is a night that is greater than a thousand months. That's Laylat Al-Qadr. مَنْ حُرِمَ خَيْرَهَا فَقَدْ حُرُمْ حُرِمْ Whoever misses out on the goodness of that night, he is surely a person who is deprived. Whoever has been deprived of that night, for surely that person is deprived. May Allah bless us and allow us to worship Him in the night of Laylat Al-Qadr. Allahumma ameen. Now the shaykh will explain. قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ Ramadan has came to you. A. إِنَّ هَذِهِ بِشَارَةٌ وَتَهْنِيَةٌ لَكُمْ This is a good news and a congratulations to you. Ramadan has came to you. This is good news and a congratulations for you. وَإِخْبَارٌ بِأَمْرٍ عَظِيمٍ تَحَقَّقُوا لَكُمْ And giving you news of a great affair that is about to be realized for you. Meaning this month of Ramadan. وَهُوَ أَنَّ رَمَضَانَ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتَمَتَّعُونَ تَتَمَتَّعُونَ بِالصِّحَّةِ وَالْعَافِيَةِ That Ramadan has came to you and you are all enjoying good health. Ramadan has came to you and you all are enjoying good health and well-being. Wallahi, this is a blessing. Ramadan has came to us, we're not sick, we're not in our bed, we're not disabled for the most part. Ramadan has came to you and you're in good health and you're in well-being. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونُونَ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ أَسِحَةُ وَالْفَرَاغِ Two blessings, most people do not benefit from them. Most people lose out on them. What are they? Good health and free time. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's saying here, Ramadan has came to you. The Shaykh is explaining, Ramadan has came to you and you are being, yani, enjoying good health and well-being. وَتَنْعَمُونَ بِالْأَمْنِ وَالْإِيمَانِ وَالسَّلَامِ وَالْإِسْلَامِ And you are being blessed with safety. No war going on for us here. No bombs being dropped down upon us. None of us are getting driven out of our houses. Like maybe happened to some of our brothers and sisters in different places. May Allah make it easy on all of them. Allahumma ameen. You are all being blessed and enjoying the blessing of safety. And iman. Faith. Wassalama and peace. Wal-Islam and having Islam. فهذا الشهر شهر رمضان قد جاءكم وهو موس عظيم للإكبار على الله. And this Ramadan has came to you, and it's a great, great season to draw near to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wallahi, if a person does not find the hidayah in this month, I don't know when they can find it. If a person does not change themselves and try to draw near in, to Allah in this month, I don't know when they will be able to draw near to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This month is a great month to draw near to Allah. Go towards Allah. Firru ila Allah. Run to Him. nafs. And for a person to take account of yourself. Everyone is supposed to take account of yourself. Reflect over yourself. Reflect over your sins. Reflect over the things that you've been doing wrong for the whole year. Reflect over the things or the desires that are haram that you have a problem with. Reflect over yourself. وَلِلْقِيَامِ بِطَاعِ اللَّهِ And to come and to be doing the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلْبُعْدِ عَلْ أُمُورِ أَلَّتِي حَرَّمَهُ اللَّهِ And to refrain from doing the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram. There was a young man I know personally who was doing a lot of wrong in his life. 
But he came from a Muslim family and his father told him, this month of Ramadan, take it serious. It's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he, because of the respect for Allah azza wa jal, and for the respect of this month, he left the things that he was doing that was haram. But he left it with the intention to go back to it as soon as the month is done. He left it with the intention to what? To go back to it. But he left it out of respect for Allah Azza wa Jal. Within two weeks, the iman rose, the taqwa rose. He was reading the Quran, he was making tarawih with the people, fasting. Within two weeks, he decided to change his life. Allah gave him hidayah. He left all of those things. What? So this is the mother person leaves the haram. This is the month a person leaves the haram. You have difficulty with something, leave it in this month. Allah will make it easy for you. And this will be the time for you to leave it forever. But if you don't leave it in this month, you can pack your bags up. Really. If you don't leave it in this time, you can pack your bags up. It's not going to be another time that will be more easier and more appropriate. And you have more help and more aid from Allah and the whole atmosphere. Wallahi, you can feel Ramadan coming in and you can feel Ramadan leaving in your soul Allahu Akbar in your soul you can feel Ramadan when it comes in even if you didn't know that today was Ramadan you can feel it and when it leaves you can feel it as well Subhanallah Al-Azim so Allah is aiding you by the atmosphere to do right and to leave wrong نعم وفي هذه الكلمة تحريق للقلوب لتستشعر قيمة هذا الشهر ومكانه ومكانته. And if this word is a shaking up of the hearts, so a person can acknowledge the great value of this month and its great status وعظيم منزلته and its great high degree. أي فتهيئ له واستعد لمجيئه واستقبلوه بأحسن استقبال وضيفوه بأحسن ضيافة. So prepare yourself for it. Prepare yourself for Ramadan. Prepare yourself to receive Ramadan. Don't wait for it to come and just be talking about it. Prepare yourself from now. Start getting ready. Start fasting a little bit. He wasn't fasting? Do a little fasting now. Let me do some fasting. Mother Sha'ban that's coming up right before Ramadan. That's a month of fasting as well. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hadith an Aisha radhla anha. She said, كَانَ يَسُمُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ شَعْبَان كُلُّهُ She said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will fast the whole of Sha'ban. Another hadith, she said, إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Except a little bit. Prepare yourself. Start fasting. Start coming to the masjid. After Fajr, maybe stay if you have time. Stay to Shuruq. Right? Give some extra charity. Start making more time for the Qur'an. Prepare yourself to come into Ramadan running. You understand what I'm saying? Come into Ramadan running. Don't come into Ramadan sitting down. And then you want to pick it up? Come into Ramadan running. So then you can start sprinting and then flying. When Ramadan comes Prepare yourself From now Don't wait for Oh it's Ramadan tomorrow Alright let me get it together Nah, nah, nah. It's going to take you 15 days It's going to take you 15 days To get to where you're supposed to be And those first 15 days You're going to do much less Than what you could have done If you started from now You're already ready You're already prepared You're already acting As if Ramadan is here right now And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Changes the atmosphere And raises your iman You're just going to take it to a whole other level You're going to be doing things You couldn't imagine that you're doing Because it's not about physicality with us It goes back to our iman The story of Sheikh bin Baz Rahimullah ta'ala He was making hajj Or making umrah with his, with his students And he was over 80 years old They're traveling for almost يعني, I don't even know how many hours A number of hours all of them, they finally get to the hotel. Everyone is completely tired. And these are young men in their 20s and 30s. They're his students. They finally get to the hotel. They all fall asleep. Sheikh bin Baz, rahimullah ta'ala, 80 years old. He's praying to hajjud. Praying to hajjud, making the salah. Everyone is tired, dead tired. Young men, 80 something years old. He's praying to hajjud. When he was asked, how do you have energy for this? He said, it's, it, it returns back to the heart. It returns back to iman. It's not about the physicality. So if you come into Ramadan and your iman is high, then Allah, with the changing of the atmosphere and the aiding you and the tying of the shayateen and so on and so forth, you will take off flying. So prepare yourself for the month. Naam. Prepare yourself for the month and receive it with the best of reception and host it with the best of hosting. 
because the people they give glad tidings to one another for the approaching of big affairs and this is the biggest of the affairs so prepare yourself for it for shahr ramadan dayfun kareem wa wafidun aziz ala nafs ala nafsi kulli mu'min for the month of ramadan is a noble guest treat this month as a guest wa wafidun aziz an honorable visitor upon every soul of the believer wa kullu mu'min yafrahu bi hadha as-dayf and every believer is pleased and joyed by this great visitor farhahu bi a'dham dayfin wa akram wafid alayhi the happiness that he will get for the greatest of guests to come to him you have a great guest that will come to you you can have you can excite so and so is coming so and so is coming you can't wait for the believer everyone is extremely happy for this great guest of ramadan to come to them then the shaykh he draws the example if you saw a man that was very generous and he enjoys giving he enjoys giving he enjoys giving charity he enjoys feeding people he enjoys yani uh, giving them drink he enjoys housing them in his house he enjoys that how would that person feel when he has a great honorable yani high status guest come to his home how is he going to feel the person loves to give he loves to give he loves to open his house to the people how is he going to feel when a very honorable person of status that is coming to his home how is he going to feel he said كيف يكون استقبال للضيف هذا شأنه how would be his reception of a guest with this type of affair or this type of status وكيف يكون فرحه به how will his joy be for him وكيف تكون ضيافته and how will be his hospitality فقوله قد جاءكم شهر رمضان so the speech of the prophet Ramadan has came to you meaning فتهيئوا لضيافة هذا الضيف العزيز to prepare yourself to be hospitable, hospitable and house this great guest and prepare yourself to be generous with him give Ramadan your best you gotta give Ramadan your best you're not gonna give him your scraps right Ramadan coming you gotta give him the best of you and to yani, give him his right right you don't want to have a guest come you just throw him scraps have him sleep in a place that's cold uncomfortable give him his right and prepare yourself to do that you know you ever bring somebody to your house your wife like I'm not prepared yet they get mad at you those who's not married don't know about that huh? they will get mad at you because they didn't prepare themselves yet the shaykh is saying prepare yourself to house this guest of Ramadan Naam. لأنه كما أنه يأتي سريعا يذهب سريعا because just like he comes quickly he's going to leave quickly فتحيوا له وعدوا أنفسكم لقيام بالعمال الجلية جليلة وطاعات النبيلة والعباد التي يسركم أن تلقوا ربكم تبارك وتعالى so prepare yourself to do great actions lofty actions of ta'a obedience and worship things that will make you pleased to meet your Lord with you want to meet Allah you want to meet Allah with him being pleased with you then do those actions that you're pleased for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see of you doing how are we on time uh, it's 820 when did we start 740 we're going to go 5 more minutes inshallah فينبغي على المسلم أن يحسن استقبال شهر رمضان وهنا يتفاوت الناس تفاوتا عظيما في كيفية استقبال هذا الشهر هذا الشهر. so it's imperative for the Muslim to make great his reception of the month of Ramadan and here the people in their reception of the month of Ramadan will differ. there are different types of people in regards to the reception of Ramadan. everybody ask yourself what type of people are you? What type of people are you in regards to your reception of Ramadan? First group of people, they are those who meet Ramadan and they go to the marketplace. And they go to the marketplace a lot. 
Yani it is very important that they go there to buy all different types of food with different types of meals and the most tasty of foods and, 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 and dishes. And they race one another to go there and buy these different types of foods and meals with so much, so much amount of food. And is as if they are approaching the month of eating and drinking, as the Sheikh says. And eating and, 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 and filling yourself with food. The way that they receive Ramadan, as if Ramadan is the month of eating and drinking. When Ramadan is really the month of what? Fasting. He said this first group of people, they meet Ramadan, racing to the marketplace to buy all types of food. To fill the house with it, even more than they need. So they're buying too much, rather they're buying more than they need. And they're buying more than their family can even eat and they will overdo it and they will yani, eat a little bit of it and just waste the rest of it. That's what the Shaykh says here. Subhanallah. Putting all these different types of food on the iftar table and eating a little bit of it and throwing it away. So they made Ramadan the month of food. Eating and drinking and parties. Waliyadu billah. We're not saying don't eat and don't have nice food when you eat, but that's not the main concern of Ramadan. Rather than I advise my brothers and sisters, don't make the iftar everything. Rather try to make your iftar a little bit light because we're eating and we're stuffing ourselves, and when it's time to pray tarawih, we want to fall asleep. We can't even stand. We don't enjoy the salah. We're just waiting for the imam to finish. Why? Because at iftar time we ate way too much food. That's a trick from the shaitan. Allah says, Kulu washrabu wa la tusrifu. Eat and drink and do not be excessive. Because yani, the night when it starts, this is the night, this is the time for you to get energy, to get strong, to worship. We're overeating, so now we're becoming tired and sluggish. We don't even want to pray. Really, that's how it be. Sitting in the salah, our stomach is so full. Yani, we got our stomach, our hands on our belly. We're going down in ruku. Yani, it doesn't feel good. We're going down in sujood, we don't feel good. We want the salah to be over. If the imam maybe does it a little bit longer, we're getting mad at him. Not because he's going too long, but because we're just so tired. We go home and go to sleep. When we should be doing what? Praying, making dua, reading Quran, benefiting from the night. That's one group of people. وَكِسْمُ الْآخَرِ إِذَا أَقْبَلَ شَهْرَ رَمَضَانِ هَيُّ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ أَدَوَاتِ اللَّعَبْ وَاللَّهْوِ وَالْضِيَاءِ And another group of people when Ramadan comes, they prepare themselves for the different means of playing to enjoy themselves and wasting time. Wallahi, we got in the Muslim countries, they got movies that come out or shows I don't know about here, it's not a Muslim land. But in the Muslim countries, they have shows that come on specific for Ramadan. Dramas, yes. The people, they come on, you know when they come on? Right when iftar comes. Allahu Musta'an. The people, they doing, the shayateen are working. And they'll make it slightly Islamic. They'll make it slightly Islamic. Right? So as soon as iftar comes, they turn the TV on. The drama comes on, they're watching a show, women, men, so on and so forth, eating, having a party. Why? To take them off the straight path. He said there's another group of people that when Ramadan comes, they prepare playing and enjoyment and wasting time. وَهَيُّ لِأَنفُسِ مُمُورٍ يُشْكِلُونَ بِهَا أَوْقَاتُهُمَ الثَّمِينَ فِي شَهْرَ رَمَضَانِ فِي دِعَاءٍ وَهَدَرْ لِأَوْقَاتِ فِي مَا لَا فَائِدَ فِيهِ بَلْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنْ الْأَحْيَانِ فِيهِ مُدِرَّةٌ Muhakkaqa. And these people prepare for themselves affairs that will busy them, busy their times, their precious time. You don't got no time, brothers and sisters. You're busy, we're busy ourselves with things of no benefit in the month of Ramadan, watching dramas, watching television. Come on, man. And they're just trying to have the time pass, things that have no benefit, and rather they are harmful sometimes. وَيَسْتَعِدُونَ إِسْتِعْدَادٍ تَامًا قَبْلَ مَجِيرَ رَمَضَانِ And they prepare themselves for these things 
with a complete preparation before Mawaf for Ramadan. How to play, how to enjoy themselves. Is a Ramadan party every night. Whose house we at? Whose house, whose house we going to tonight? I'm not saying don't come together with your family. This is good. It's a good time to do it. But remember the purpose of Ramadan. And that is what? What is the purpose of the fasting? To achieve taqwa. Ramadan is not a month of partying. We come together, we eat. Yes, alhamdulillah, we sit, we enjoy ourselves. You visit family, that's good. That's from the deen. But don't keep, don't get your eyes off the prize. That's to save your soul from the hellfire. That's to rid yourself of your desires. That's to get your sins forgiven. That's become, to leave out of Ramadan a better you. Because the, the, the formula is there. How to become a better person, a better Muslim is there in that month. But you have to work. And the next group of people, وَهُنَاكْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَعَامِلُونَ مَا هَذَا الشَّهَرُ One second. وَهُنَاكْ آخَرُونَ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِتَوْفِيقِهِ وَكَلَّأَهُمْ بِرِعَايَتِهِ وَحَاطَهُمْ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَ بِعِنَايَتِهِ فَأَخَذُوا يُحَيِّونَ أَنفُسُهُمْ لرمضان. And there's another group of people that Allah has blessed. And He has given them His success. And He has protected them. And he has covered them with his great concern and care. And they took and they began to prepare themselves for Ramadan. فَتَجِدْ أَحَدُهُمْ تُكْثُرْ أَمَامُهُ الْخَوَاتِرِ So one of them, his mind is racing. And these people who Allah has blessed, his mind is racing now. How, what can I do? What's the thing? How can, I, how can I benefit? How can I set up my work schedule this month for Ramadan so I can get the maximum time in the masjid? Maximum ibadah. What can I do? Let me see from now. How am I going to set up my days? How am I going to set up my nights? They thinking from now. وَتُدُورُ فِي خَلَدِهِ فِي خَلَدِهِ صُنُوفٌ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْخَيْرَاتِ And he's thinking about many different types of good that he can do. Maybe I can read Quran. Maybe I can go visit the sick people over there. Maybe I can give this type of charity. Maybe so on and so forth. Their mind is racing. فَيَبْدَأُ يَتَرَدَّبْ لِلْقُرْآنِ وَقْتًا So then he begins to make a portion of time for Quran. وَلِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَقْتًا And for a portion of time for the remembrance of Allah. وَلِلْقِيَامَ اللَّيْلِ وَقْتًا And a portion of time for قِيَامَ اللَّيْلِ وَلِمُسَاعَدَةَ الْمُحْتَاجِينَ وقت And for a portion of time to help the needy. وَلِلْبَذْلِ وَقْتًا وَلِلْمُجَالِسِ الْعِلْمِ وَقْتًا And make a time to sit in the circles of knowledge. فَتَتَزَاحَمُ عَلَيْهِ And then he is, يعني, in zahma, he is, يعني, covered or filled or, يعني, just, Everywhere he looks, yani he's prepared for himself for good. He's surrounded with good now. That's one group of people. And the last group of people, we finished the class. Lil Asaf al Shadid, we're very sorry to say. May Allah make us from this group that we just mentioned, Allahumma Ameen. Last group of people, we finish here. وَهُنَاكْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَعَامَلُونَ مَا شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ تَعَامَلُهُمْ مَعَ كُلِّ شَهْرٍ And there are people. Who their relationship with the month of Ramadan is like their relationship with any month. There's no difference to them. Ramadan, Sha'ban, Rajab, January, February, March, same thing to these people. May Allah guide them and guide us. فَيَمْدِي عَلَيْهِ شَهْرُ Ramadan كَمَا تَمْدِي عَلَيْهِمْ بَقِيَةُ الشُّهُورِ And Ramadan will pass him or pass them just like any other month will pass them. حتى إن الليلة التي جاء في القرآن أنها خير من أهل في شهر تمضي على كثير من الناس مضى سائر الليالي even the night that came in the Quran that is better than a thousand months will pass by them just like any other night والياذ بالله سبحان الله وهذه خسارة فادحة وغبن بين and this is a clear clear loss وَإِهْدَارٌ لِمَا لَا يَلِيقُ بِالْمُسْلِمْ أَنْ يُهْدِرُهُ وَأَنْ يُضَيِّعُهُ And is a waste that is not befitting of a Muslim to waste. وَلِهَذَا يَنْبَغِ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمْ أَنْ يُحْسِنْ إِسْتِقْبَالِ هَذَا الشَّهَرِ وَأَنْ يُحْسِنْ دِيَافَتُهُ وَأَنْ يُهَيِّئَ لِنَفْسَهُ لِأَنْ يَكُونَ مِنْ أَهْلِ هَذَا الشَّهَرِ صِدْقًا وَحَقًّا So it's imperative, let me close here, on every Muslim to make great and perfect his reception of the month of Ramadan. And to perfect and make great his 
housing or being hospitable to this great guest of Ramadan that will leave very quickly and to prepare himself to be from the true people of this month yani in truth and rightfully na'am hadha wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh